So here we ask to verify Parseval's theorem for a particular signal, e to the minus at. So it's a single-sided decaying exponential. So when the question is to verify a theorem, it's not the same as being asked to prove it. So prove and verify are not the same. So to verify something, we need to demonstrate that it applies that it holds, that it is true for this particular signal. So just by way of reminder, what is Parseval's theorem? Parseval's theorem basically says that the energy of a signal in the time domain is the same as the energy of the same signal in the frequency domain. And the value of this energy is simply calculated by integrating the signal squared. And then the frequency, it's the same, except you divide by 2 pi. We take the modulus of the Fourier transform and integrate over all frequency. So to verify that it holds, we need to show that the energy that we calculate in the time domain is the same as the energy that we calculate in the frequency domain. So let's, let's do both. Let's find the energy in the time domain, and then the energy in the frequency domain, and show that they're the same. So the energy in the time domain is the integral minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus at squared dt. Now, what happened? to the unit step. Well, I'm going to use the unit step to replace that limit and integrate from zero to infinity. So that gives me the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus two at dt. So that's minus one over two a times e to the minus two at from zero to infinity. And that gives me minus one over two a times e to the minus infinity minus e to the power zero. So that is one and that is zero, so that then simplifies to one over two a. So that is the energy of the signal as computed in the time domain. If I can find that same energy in the frequency domain, then I will have verified Parseval's theorem. So let's change color. So, because we're integrating the modulus of the Fourier transform, that modulus, um, that's the magnitude of the Fourier transform, let's, let's, first, let's first do that. So let's remind ourselves, what's the, the Fourier transform of an exponential pulse? So, f of omega is 1 over a plus i omega. So you've been given that in several questions. So we, we can use that as a starting point. So the modulus of f of omega is the modulus of 1 over a plus i omega. So we have a complex number in the denominator. So how do we deal with that? What we can do is multiply numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate, a minus a i omega. And that gives you a minus i omega divided by a squared plus omega squared. Why is it plus? Because i squared equals minus 1. Remember that. So, 
what I haven't yet done is calculated the modulus. So again, because the numerator now is complex, the modulus is, take the scaling factor out, it's So that's the magnitude or the modulus. That's the magnitude of that expression in there. So now we know that, we can use that for to find the energy. So I'm going to take all that and shrink it out of the way. Put that aside and go back to EX in the frequency domain. So EX in the frequency domain is 1 over 2 pi times the integral of... Oh, we can still simplify this a little bit more. So if you, if you simplify that, that actually gives you um, 1 over square root of A squared plus omega squared. Okay, so... Here, once I square it, see that there, that will give me 1 over a squared plus omega squared d omega. So let's get this out of the way. Now, how do we integrate that? Helpfully, you're given a little hint in the question. So we're allowed to use that. If only I could pick it up. So we can use that hint and carry on with the integration. So we have one over two pi, and then I can now, obviously, the hint is giving us x, but we're integrating over omega. So we simply have 1 over a tan inverse omega over a. And the limits are from minus infinity to infinity. So that's 1 over 2 pi a times tan inverse of infinity minus tan inverse of minus infinity. Okay? So, these two numbers, you can't find it from a calculator, but the tan inverse of infinity is pi over 2, and the tan inverse of minus infinity is minus pi over 2. So the difference between them is pi, that will give you pi over 2 pi a. And if you simplify that, you end up with 1 over 2 a. So that is my energy in the frequency domain. And you'll notice that that's exactly the same as the energy we found in the time domain. So we've now verified Parsifal's theorem by demonstrating it's the same energy.